Right. Today I want to talk about the noise of the radar because the signal reflect back to the to the radar has a lot of noise, not only from the target but also from another uh, another object in the environment. So it's important to figure out the cluster for the cell phone detection of the target. Uh, it's critical to divide uh, driving scenario to avoid the car from suddenly breaking in the absence of the valid targets, right? This sudden breaking happens when the radar detects the reflection that are generated from the cluster. So what cluster right here? I will show you cluster. In this picture, you see, uh, the car not only uh, the radar not only reflect uh, back from the targets, but also they have to re reflect back from cluster. Cluster right here may be the ground, water, snow, frost, rain, trees, whatever, right? So radar not only receive a free flash signal from the object of the interest, but also from the environment and unwanted object. So the bad scatter from these unwanted source is called clutter. So these unwanted signals are generally produced by the reflection from the ground, sea, building, trees, grain, right? Uh, the nature, the magnitude of cluster sig signal depends on the nature of the surface, the ground, water, snow, okay? A smooth need of the surface or raising angle, the angle of the radar beam match the surface or radar frequency. So we should have the threshold value to recheck all the cluster right here to get only the target signal, right? How to do that? So we put the cluster thresholding. We had to fill out all cluster for the second detection targets, right? But when the taking to remove the cluster, it to remove the signal to have the zero doubler velocity. Because uh, the cluster in the driving scenario are often created by stationary targets. So the zero doppler filtering can help get rid of them. The downside of the zero doppler filtering is that the radar would not able to detect the stationary targets in its path. So this would lead to detection failures. So another technique calls the fixed cluster threat holding with the fixed track holding signal below track hold value is rejected. So with this method, if the detection threshold is set too high, there will be very few for alarms. But it also masks a value valid targets, right? If the track hold is set too low, then it would lead to many for alarms. In other words, the four alarms rate would be too high. So four alarm rates is the ray of enormous, 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 enormous uh, radar detection by noise or the interfering signals. It is measure of the presence of detected radar targets when there's no valid ter targets present. So this threshold is not too high or not too low. If not it too low, you get a lot of noise. But too high, you miss a lot of targets, right? So that's to solve this problem, we use the dynamic stress holding. Dynamic stress holding is very, very threshold level to reduce the uh, fall alarm rate. So this method is called the C4. It's been constant for alarm rates. With this technique, the noise as every a group of brain doppler beam is monitored and signal is compared to the local noise level. This comparison is used to create threshold with hold the fall alarm rate constant. So look at the picture right here. You can see we have a lot of noise right here, but we check uh, one by one right here. You can got the straight hole value right here. But so right here, you can see we got the straight hole right here. And it's dynamic. It means it's dynamic straight holding. So we and we compare the value right here, the value, the average value is lower than this one. It means we got equal zero, but it's higher than one, so it's higher threshold value. Okay, we just got good uh, detection, okay, the targets detect. Uh, so the fall alarm, can, the fall alarm, alarm issue can be resolved by implementing the constant fall alarm rate. 
C4, the varies the detection based how based on the vehicle surrounding. The C4 techniques estimate the level of interference in the radar range and double cell. Because the cell is called, called the training cell on the other side, both the side called the cell under test. So the estimates is used to decide if the target is in the cell under test. What the cell under test right here, we have the training cell right here, green one, this guard cell, and the cell under test right here. The process look across all the range cell and decide present the target based on the noise estimate. So the basis of process is when the noise present, the cell around the cell, the cell around the cell of interest will contain good estimate of the noise. So it's assumed that the noise or, or the interference, interference, especially or temporarily homogeneous. So theoretically, it's produced a constant for long ray, which is dependent on the noise cluster level. So we, you had to know how this C4 work for the code. Before that, you had to know uh, the what the numbers, training cell, number of guard cell, and total cell right here. So the cell, what the cell undertake, we call the cut. Okay, the cell under test means the cell tested to detect the presence of targets by comparison the signal level against the noise domain. The training cell means the level of noise is measured over training cell. The training cell can be divided into two regions, the cell latching, or, or the latching training cell or the leading, okay, the cell leading called the leading training cell. The noise is estimated by average of the noise under the training cells. In some case, either leading or latching cell average taken. So, whilst all the leading and latching cell average combine and the higher up to consider up the full noise level estimate. So, the guard cell is the cell that next to the uh, cell under test. Uh, are assigned as a guard cell. The purpose of the guard cell is to avoid the target signal from leaking into the training cell that could adversely affect uh, the noise estimate. The number of guard cells should be decided based on the leakage of the target signal out of the cell on the test. So threshold factor is use the offset value to scale the noise threshold. If the signal strain is defined logarithm is form, then add this offset value to the average noise estimate. Okay, the purpose of C4 algorithm means you uh, create the threshold value right here to separate or reject all the noise right here and to guess uh, the um, the value of the target okay signal right here. So how the uh, algorithm works. The first one, you have to define the number of training cells and guard cells. Second, start sliding window one cell at a time cross completely uh, transform, uh, free rate transform 1D array. So total window should be two training cell plus guard cell plus cell under 10 So For each step, sum up signal within the leading or latching training cell. After that, we got average of sum to determine the noise threshold. And after that, you got the upper offset value scale the threshold. And then you measure the signal in the cell under test, which is uh, T training cell plus guard cell plus one from the window starting points. So you compare the signal measure in the file is file right here from the threshold value to measure with the four. Four is mean the uh, noise threshold holds. So if the level of signal measure in the cell under test smaller than threshold measures, then we assign zero value, right? That's the uh, we had to the uh, flow step by step. We had to define the training cell right here, guard cell, and the cell under test right here. Okay, and we look for, run the follow up right here. So. In the code, you had to see look like right here. We generate the yes, 1,000 sample right here. We got absolutely value and randomly a 1,000 sample. So in 1,000, we assign a 100 at the location 100, 200, and 350, 700 with the value of the targets is 15, 7, 13. Right now, uh, we generate a signal right here with the targets right here. So how we suppress, release all the 
the noise right here will only only guess the signal right here of the targets right here so we apply the c4 algorithm so we say i want training cell is 12 and she got cell 4 and then uh we got the offset uh, define the offset is 5 okay the offset it means how you move the average value up about how much to suppress all the noise value and we create two vectors straight hole and signal c4 right here then the most important thing is you run the follow-up right here uh, you run all the cell from one to all the sample okay and then you got the noise level for each step you ask the noise within all the training cell right here that's a sum right here right so then you got the average value and you multiply with the offset so you push to, uh, to the vector straight hole C4. Then you now you pick up the cell under the test, which is the T plus training cell plus guard cell, uh, away from the first training cell and measure signal level. A signal level right here. Then you to, to compare the signal to stress hole. If the signal less than stress hole, okay, it's equal to zero. Okay, it's more than or five, it's the target. Uh, and the result you will got right here. You can see we have a lot of noise right here, and look like what we want to apply C4 to separate all the uh, noise right here, and the rest right here is the, um, the C4 threshold value. And we compare the green right here to the uh, threshold, okay, to know the detection. That's the algorithm. So one more thing I want to talk about the phase array antenna is an antenna array that's steering a steer the beam electric uh, electronically in the desired direction. The array steer the beam if the is antenna element in the array is cited by signal with certain phase values. So right here you see the steering the beam angle. So for antenna, the beam to steer in desired direction, the phase zipper are programmed to have the constant phase increment. Increment right here, for example, 0 to 15, and up to 15, 30, 15, 45, 30, 15, 60, okay? Um, I mean, the given direction is 15 degree. The so increment phase zipper along the spacing between antenna element D is determine the steering angle of the antenna using okay follow equation right here okay and as the radar scan surrounding by steering the beam at the program angle so it can send the angle of the return signal is have radar create the special perception environment right here uh, in the bar right here the signal bar right here, you have the antenna array right here um, and right here's how they generate uh, increment, increment the phase 15 degree to scan the environment. Mm. And at the rate of scan, the surrounding by steering the beam at the program angle is measure the uh, signal noise ratio or reflected signal from the targets located at different angles, especially. So this helps creating an angle of a right and uh, noise, signal noise ratio for radar spatial perception. Right here, angle of arrival versus to switch um, signal noise ratio. Signal noise ratio. So in this video, I, I expect you to understand the C4. C4 algorithm right here help us to detect the target, the real targets, the valid targets, okay, and how we suppress, suppresses, I mean, the list we check all the, uh, uh, the noise to get the valid targets right here, and, and how we write this one in the map lab code, okay, you know, right here, so we generate, the signal okay and yes some um, for targets valid targets so how we uh, recheck all the noise we have the correct the tar targets right here we apply the c4 right mm.
in the C file, you have to define the training cell, guard cell, and cell in the test. Okay. And right here, we have the dynamics, the, the dynamics, the uh, threshold. So we, in this group of value, you had to recheck and uh, the noise and you compare the target to the threshold. Right here, if you fix the threshold value, might be something wrong, or if it's not good threshold, maybe we miss some target, or too high or too low. Too low, we got so many noise, or too high, we miss the target. So uh, that's the reason we need to apply the C4 algorithms.